How do the stanzas of the poem, The Field Mouse, build on each other to develop the setting of the poem? In this lesson, you will learn how to describe how a poem's stanzas build on each other by looking for what they have in common and thinking about how each one adds to the others. But first, let's review. We're reading the poem, The Field Mouse, written by Cecil Francis Alexander. In this poem, the speaker is a little boy and he's talking directly to a mouse. He also mentions a farmer. In this lesson, we will focus on stanzas. So what is a stanza? In a poem, a stanza is a group of lines that divides up the poem. The field mouse has four stanzas. As we read the poem stanzas, we're going to look for things they have in common or a commonality. A commonality is something that is shared or similar, even if the other things are different. For example, a dog, a cat, and a turtle are all different animals, but a commonality they share is that they can be pets. So remember, when you see the word commonality in this lesson, you're looking for something that is similar among different things. Our lesson has three steps. First, we'll reread the poem and notice if anything that the stanzas have in common jumps out at you. Second, we'll continue reading to see if you can find more evidence of a commonality by asking, do any parts of this stanza fit together with what the other stanzas have in common? Third, we'll think about all the parts you just pulled out and ask, how does each part add on to the others? So our first step is to reread the poem and look for something the stanzas have in common. I'll start with just the first two stanzas and see if anything jumps out at me. Remember, this isn't the first time I've read the poem, so instead of reading carefully for each word's meaning, I'm going to read a little quicker and skim through the text. Hmm, you know what I noticed? In stanza two, lines seven and eight say, little thing in what dark den lie you all the winter sleeping. But at the beginning of the first stanza, the poem talked about acorns tumbling down and trees shedding their berries. At first, these might seem like they're describing really different things, but I actually think this might be a commonality. I think both these stanzas are talking about the seasons. Stanza two clearly starts out taking place in the winter. For one thing, it says so right here in the poem, but I also know that winter is the time when animals hibernate in their dens. In stanza one, both the acorn tumbling and then shedding are words that describe things falling down. So it sounds like the trees are dropping their acorns and berries. Well, I know that trees drop their leaves in the fall, so I bet that's what the author is describing here. I think I might be onto something that these stanzas have in common. They both seem to be talking about the seasons. So now I'm going to move on to step two and continue reading to see if I can find more evidence of a commonality by asking, hmm, does this part tie in with what the other stanzas have in common? So specifically, I'll be looking for more evidence that ties in with the seasons. So I'll pick up where I left off in stanza two. Look, the very next lines say, till warm weather comes again, then once more I see you peeping. Well, warm weather definitely signals a change in the season. It can't be winter anymore. And I also noticed that the mouse is doing something really different. In winter, he was hibernating, but now he's peeping around the tall tree roots, nibbling at their fallen fruits. This must mean he's looking around to find food. He must be awake and hungry after his long winter nap. All this seems to tell me that the setting is now springtime. So sure enough, this also ties in with the seasons. Let's move on to the third and fourth stanzas to see if there is any more evidence of a link to the seasons. Hmm, stanza three doesn't seem to talk about the seasons quite as much. This stanza is more about the farmer, but it does mention acorns, so maybe this stanza also takes place in the fall. Let's try the fourth stanza. Hmm. Ooh, I've got it. On the fourth line of the stanza, it says, play about the sunny meadow. I bet the author is talking about summer if the weather is so nice. Oh, it also says keep away from corn, and I know that corn is also something that grows in the summer, so I bet I can add this as more evidence that the stanzas all refer to the seasons. So now that I've found so much evidence of a commonality in the stanzas, my last step is to step back and think about all of the parts that I just pulled out. I'm going to ask how does each part add on to the others? 
hey, you know what I'm realizing? If you add all of these parts together, you end up with the whole year. By including references to each season, the individual stanzas all build on each other to show that the poem takes place over the course of an entire year. Now all I have to do is use my notes to answer the question in complete sentences. Remember, I'm answering the question, how do the stanzas of the poem, The Field Mouse, build on each other to develop the setting of the poem? So, using my notes, I think I'll write... The stanzas build on each other to show that the setting of the poem takes place over the whole year. In the first stanza, the speaker watches the mouse's activities in fall, while the trees lose their acorns and berries. The second stanza describes the mouse hibernating in the winter, and then shows how he looks for food in the spring. The fourth stanza talks about the mouse playing in a sunny field in the summer. In this lesson, we first reread the poem to notice if anything that the stanzas have in common jumps out at you. Then, we continue reading to see if you can find more evidence of commonality by asking, do any parts of the stanza fit together with what the other stanzas have in common? Third, we think about all the parts you just pulled out and ask, how does each part add on to the others? In this lesson, you have learned how to describe how a poem's stanzas build on each other by looking for what they have in common and thinking about how each one adds to the others.